hi welcome back to my channel my name is Juliana and today we'll be talking about um, the seven ways to stay on track of your budget I have previously made two videos on budgeting how to you know how to establish your budget and how to create it using Excel is all on my channel so if you click on the playlist for finance you'll find such videos um, and I will advise you go back and watch them to understand them um, what we've been doing so far so today we're going to be talking about the seven ways to stay on on track of your budget so the first way is by not making your budget restrictive and what I mean by that is be honest with yourself adjust your budget in such a way that you it will be easy for you to follow it will be easy for you to to to, to stay to the figure that you've put on your budget so for example if you say you are going to save 100 pounds that month then make it easy for yourself to be able to save 100 pounds if you know that based on your expenses and based on your lifestyle, there's no way you can save hundred pounds and don't put hundred pounds there because what would happen is when you put hundred pounds and you then you are not able to save hundred pounds is the slippery slope. Things begin to happen and then you go far off your budget. Your actual is so different to your budget in this, in the way that you give up on your budget. So that is not ideal. So you have to make sure that your budget is not too restrictive. It gives you room to manipulate a few things, you know, things that you might not have anticipated. You know, just be honest with yourself. Be honest with your spendings. I mean, it takes time to be able to, you know, cultivate and curb your spending activities, your spending patterns. It takes time. So make sure that your budget is true to yourself so that you don't give up on your budget and you can stay on track. The second reason and uh, way is to live below your means. It's so important in order to be able to manage a budget that you are living below your means. And what I mean by that is you live as if you are not earning what you are earning. For example, if your income is say two thousand pounds, you want to live as if your income is actually one thousand five hundred. So imagine you don't have that extra five hundred. How would you? What would your spendings be like? What would your what your fixed expenses, your flexible expenses, what would your savings be like? You know, just assume and bring your income down and just basically live below your means. By doing that, you give yourself room. If at any particular time you need to spend more than you've anticipated, you have room to be able to, to kind of adjust your budget with that extra 500 because when by living below your means, you're conscious of what you are spending. You're not thinking, oh, I earn 2,000, but no, I earn 1,500. That will limit the way you think about your spending. That will limit, you know, all your wants and your needs. Um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, if you are actually earning 1,500, you're going to live according to that 1,500. You're, go you're not going to spend above the 1,500. And that's what that's the best way to live so that that 500 is like a blanket for you a blanket of protection you know for when you need it or when you need a special and if you are not going to need it then put it in a savings that becomes an additional savings and you don't have you know you have room to wiggle room in the month without going over your budget okay the third way to to stay on track is to take advantage of your bank hub okay Many of us, I don't know if you are aware or not, most of the banks that we bank with, they now have an application on the bank app that captures your expenses. So, for example, if you go to the end of the last and um, previous month, you would see are you a bank with Barclays and Barclays would show me how I've spent my money. OK, so it will show what I spent on what. Now, on the face of it, the app is not very detailed because, I mean, they try to generalize it. But what you can do actually is to click on the generalized way that they've done it and you can drill down. For example, when they say, for example, you spend 500 pounds and they've classified it as orders. What you can do is go it drill down into the orders and then you can drill down into what that expenses was exactly. So, for example, if it was you bought some purchases like uh, maybe your your personal hygiene or something, you can actually rename it personal hygiene. You can drill down and change it to whatever the description of the expenses is in such a way that it gives you the actual 
measure of how you spent your money in that month so you will next time it wouldn't tell you oh 500 in orders it will break it down for you 100 in hygiene 100 in self-care it will break it down for you so use your app once you've created that then it remembers your spending pattern it remembers what you've renamed as something else so every month when you go into it it gives you comparison of a three months so it will show you the previous month the, the two previous months and the current month you are in to show you the spending pattern whether you spend more on that in that particular month or you spend less on that in that particular month okay the fourth way on how you can stay on track with your budget is to make your savings inaccessible and i mean inaccessible some of us have self-control and some of us don't i don't have that strong self-control so basically what i do is where my savings is i do not have an internet access to my savings so basically i have to physically go to that bank to withdraw money from the bank to be able to get my money out and that's not something i love to do i don't like um going into town or going into places physically i do most of my things online food shopping, clothes shopping, whatever it is, my banking is all online. But that particular savings, I have no access online. So it means whatever I transfer in there is going to stay in there. And you have to think and be honest with yourself. How can you control your savings? Are you the one, are you likely to face any little bit of financial difficulty and deep into your savings? If you are like that, then I would advise make your savings inaccessible. Because at the end of the day, if you remember my second point when I said live above, live below your means. If you are living below your means, you shouldn't need to dip into your savings. You should have that extra blanket, you know, to be able to fall back on without you having to dip into your savings. If you are living below your means, then you are assuming that you are earning less than you are earning. So you should be able to tailor make your tailor make your expenses in such a way that it looks like you are not earning as much as you are earning, and that would help you. So make your savings inaccessible so that you are not able to dip into it anytime you want that saving stays there until you need it for what you've been saving towards either it was it's your long term your um short term or your medium term savings okay the fifth way on how you can stay on track is to utilize multiple bank accounts okay and what i mean by that is i bank with three different banks so my savings that is inaccessible is with a different bank i have no other account that i use with them even though i have a savings i don't other another savings i don't touch it i just use that isa account as my savings and that's it okay then i have two other accounts so once my salary comes in i split it i don't because the worst thing you can do is to leave your balance right there and you can see it every time you log into your bank so what you want to do is you want to split it and put half of it in a different account. For example, all our direct debits and everything that we do come on different dates. So you want to be able to keep some apart for the direct debits that come later on in the month. So basically just measure the, the balance on your normal account to make sure that it's only what you need in there that is left in there. Any excess that you don't need yet that will not come out until the end of the month them in a separate account and as the direct debits go out of your account or as expenses goes out of your account then you bring those money from the other account and put it in your normal account that will give you a sense of just what you need being in your bank as opposed to everything just being in there in one go and then you're tempted to spend it on what you don't need or you're tempted to spend it on what you have not budgeted for so that's the best way use your accounts you know to manage the, the how you need your money when you need your money so that you don't end up spending what should have been used on something else basically and that helps you to stay on track because that helps you to be able to follow what's on your budget when you need to spend it okay the sixth way is to set up a standing order for your savings don't don't even wait you know for you for you to move it out of your savings or anything set up a standing order for the savings to come out of your account the same day your salary or your main income comes into your account in such a way that when you log into your accounts that savings is already gone before you log in so you, it's not part of your balance 
when you log into your account the savings has already been taken or whatever it is that you need to save towards is already gone out of your account so that your brain you your eyes will be telling your brain that that's all you have to spend as opposed to if your savings were still there and you think oh gosh i've got i still i've still got money i've still got things that, that's when temptation starts no you don't want to do that you want your standing order to be the same date your main income comes to your account so that when you log on is minimal balance the balance that is available for you to spend on your expenses that you meet in your account okay and then the seventh and final way is to periodically review your budget so like every three months compare your actual with your budget my second video shows you how to do that compare the actual spending to your budget if you fi find in such a way that you are spending more than is in your budget but there are things that are essential then you go back to number one which is what I said about not your budget not being too restrictive. So if you find out that the budget at the end of the day when you've done your review is actually too restrictive or is not an actual measure of how you spend your money, then go back to num my number one point and restructure your budget. So make sure it's no longer flexible, it's no, it's no longer restrictive for you and it's in such a way where you are able to follow it without falling back on your plan because remember your budget is a plan is a plan on how you're going to spend the money that is coming to you is a plan on how you're going to spend your income be it your salaries be it your side income be it your passive income whatever it is all of them must be part of your plan and remember this all the time whatever is measured can be managed if you measure anything, whatever be cost, be whatever it is, your savings, whatever it is that you measure can be managed. You are in control. You are in control. So, and that's what I have for you today. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or queries, um, please put them in my comment box. And like I mentioned, all my videos will always be in a playlist so you can access to make it easy for you to access the videos that you need on my channel so please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching see you next time bye